What's up, Extreme River Fishers? Welcome to Max Extreme River Fishing Outdoors. I'm Mac. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna do a video today that I should have done a long time ago. It's on my Old Town 158. Now I've done videos on my Old Town 119s, which I think is the best solo canoe out there. Um, I've done videos on my Coleman's canoe, a square stern canoe. Done videos on my Wilderness Systems ATAC 140, which is a great boat out in the ocean or in the marshes. Um, or on big lakes. I've done a video on my uh, CN 12T 12 foot kayak um, but probably the most versatile boat I think out there that's made and it's the most versatile boat I got is the Old Town 158. Now is it the best boat out there? No, when I mean best boat, it's the best boat for the money. Um, so I'm going to show you what little things I've done to make mine a little better. You can tweak them if you want to. You can disregard them if you want to. But I'm going to take you up front in just a minute and, and show you that. Let's talk about some pros and cons on this boat. Um, the only con I can think about on this boat is this heavy. I think it's 87 or 90 pounds. It's somewhere in that range. I bought this one boat in 1996, 24 years ago. Um, I was a lot younger man then. I could handle this boat good. It's made out of polyethylene. Um, it's heavier than Kevlar. Or heavier than uh, Rolex, but the thing about Kevlar or Rolex, they're double the money. So that's the only con I can think about this 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 whole boat. It's just it's a little bit heavy. Not bad. Um, it's the only con. Now the pros. What are the pros? You can paddle this thing tandem or solo, and I'll show you how you paddle it solo. It's easy. You just sit in the front seat and turn around backwards. But okay, what's up, everyone? I'm gonna show you how you can paddle Old Town 158 solo. What you do is you sit in the front seat. But you turn around and you face the back, makes everything more balanced. Uh, Pete's gonna go with me today. Pete, get down here, come on, run. Come on, let's go fishing, come on. Uh, but I'm gonna go paddle out there, I'm gonna show you how you stand in it pretty easy. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. If I can get Pete in the boat. Come on, Pete, come here. Come on. Come on. Right here, get up here, go. Get up here, there you go. Come on, up here, up here, go. All right, now I'm actually sitting in the front of the boat facing the back. So we're gonna go paddle and get up from the stand. Alright guys, me and Pete's out here at Jordan Lake, I'm in actually the front seat, but I'm facing the back, that's the best way to paddle this boat solo, You're more towards the center of the boat, still got good control of the boat. I'm going to show you can stand up. That's all it is, guys. Great stability, paddles well. Uh, let's get busy with the video. Woo! How to make it more comfortable? You put a seat back on it. I'll show you the one I use. Um, you can add a motor to this. You need a motor mount, but you can add a motor to it. Another pro: it's almost indestructible. When I say almost, it's almost because I have put a crack in this one. I'm the only person I know that's ever put a crack in one of these things, and I'll tell you how it went. I've had this boat about three or four years, somewhere around 2000. I was on the Dan River up in Eden, North Carolina. I just got through canoe, fishing and canoeing a section of the river. I was taking out the boat ramp, had it over my head, walking up the boat ramp beside my car, getting ready to put it on my rack. Little kid, three, four, five year old kid, runs around my car but clips me, hits me. I start falling with the canoe. Evidently, they were chasing each other. Another kid's coming around the other side 
and I start following with it, and I see that this 90 pound canoe is going to hit this other kid. So I took and I shoved it as hard as I could into the air, and I threw it about 10 feet. Back then I was a lot stronger. I threw it about 10 feet, so it goes flying, lands on a rock about that big. I checked it over, it looked fine. I didn't say much. I was kind of ill with that outfitter and the parents were not looking at their thing, but I kept my mouth shut. I didn't say nothing. Loaded it back on the car, went home, put it up on my rack. Next week I went canoeing to Jordan Lake. I, n I noticed little water seepage in the bottom. I thought it was dripping off the paddles, and I noticed a little more. And I only got about that much water in there in one spot, but I brought it back home, checked it out good. I found a crack about that long. So what I did is I drilled a hole in each end of the crack. I followed Old Town's instructions. I got the epoxy repair kit. I epoxied it, fixed it. Um, obviously, you can see the repair, but I covered it with duct tape for a little more protection. And I replaced the duct tape about every two years, and it's done fine. So it's been like 20 years. But it's really almost indestructible. Okay, guys, another pro to this boat is its stability. Uh, the Old Town 158 is a very stable boat. 15 and a half feet long. It's not too wide, but it's not too narrow. It's just got the right amount of stability. I, when I fish this thing solo, and like I said, when I'm solo, I'm sitting in the front seat, but facing the other way. I can stand up and fish. It's no problem. I'm six, six foot three, 190 pounds, have no problem with it. When I'm fishing at tandem, I usually fish in the back, and my fishing partner being in the front, I've had fishing buddies up front that weigh up to 230, 240 pounds. Even had a 60 pound hyper dog in the middle. It's been fine, no problem. Um, I'll give you one little story about it. I used to fish this boat all the time for catfish with a trolling motor. And I would troll up river to one of my spots. And I would anchor, use a brush gripper, grab to a limb and catfish all night long. But one night I'm on the river, I don't see another boat anywhere and which is great because I don't want any other competition out there and I only had two bites that night 11 pound gar and a 46 pound catfish I got the 46 pound catfish in got them in the bottom of the boat as soon as I got them in the bottom of the old town 158 here comes the John boat coming to the river for spotlight shining spotlight well he sees me his light shines on me he comes up to me asks me how to been catching anything I pick it up and I stand up. I'm six foot three, got a hunt, uh, 43 pound blue cat. I'm standing up. I put my foot on the gunwale and I hand him, before, right before that, I hand him the camera, ask him to take a picture. He takes a picture of it. I would have had a very, this was before my GoPro and everything, I would have had a very crappy picture of that fish laying in the bottom of the boat if it wasn't for that guy. But I'm standing up in an old town 158 with a 46 pound blue cat in the middle of the night. It's like three o'clock in the morning. So that tells you how stable it is. I'll throw a picture of that if I can in if I can find that. Mommy's got a nice fish on. Don't get them too close. Pete, sit down. Okay guys, this is a short clip from a video from a year and a half ago when my wife catches a nice bass and I climb up from the back to the front of this canoe. So all three of us are sitting in the front of this canoe. Um, I'm going to help her land this fish, but this shows you the stability of this boat. Pull them up a little bit. Pull real down to them. Here. Pull them to you. Easy, easy. Get him, Pete. Got in this current. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, don't he's got him. Woo, that's a nice one. On a shatter. That might be the biggest of the day. I think he is. What do you think, Pete? Another pro to this boat. This is just paddles easy. Like I said, it is, it's got enough whip to be stable, but it's not so wide, it doesn't paddle easy. Now it doesn't have a keel, so if you get on a wide open lake, and this is gonna be any canoe, get on a wide open lake with some wind, you know, it's gonna be hard to keep it straight, but that's any canoe. But it paddles easy, just glides right through the water, 
um, just another pro to this boat. The other pro is you can find this boat anywhere used if you don't want to buy it new. You can get on Craigslist, you can get on Facebook Marketplace, you can find this used in neighbors. I mean, there's so many of these boats out there. If you're not wanting to spend the money on a new canoe and you're just getting into canoeing, this is a great boat for a seasoned canoer or a beginner canoer because you, you just you can find it anywhere. So anyway, let's get busy. Let's go in the front yard and I'm going to show you the little um, things I've done to make my canoeing better with this canoe. Okay, guys, let me show you that one of the more recent things I did a few years back is, like I said, this thing is heavy. That's the con on it. Um, I took an eighth inch aluminum plate. I, I originally built this out of wood and it lasted a few years and it rotted. Um, even though it's exterior wood, exterior plywood. I remade it with eighth inch aluminum plate. It's 18 inches long this way, 22 inches wide this way, long this way. It's got wheelbarrow tires. It's got a 5 8 inch rod for the axle. It's got eye bolts. I've got pins. I'll show you how I do it. The tires just come off by pulling that right there. You take the washer off. Put them on right there. Make sure I don't lose them in the grass. So right there. And that keeps it from sliding back and forth. One on each side. I just drilled holes in the um, 5 8 inch axle rod. You can get that at any hardware store. And that's all it is. Uh, this is actually one by four plastic boards, two of them sandwiched together. I've got all this epoxy. Um, I've already said this is a 5 8 inch rod. Showed you how I did all this. This is a three by four inch hole. I've got cut out right here. So I can get to my rope. Uh, it's bolted with a quarter 20 screws. Um, but this makes it a lot easier to tote this thing 100 or 200 yards. I have a cart that I can put underneath it, but it's a lot easier um, to do this for short trips. Um, so I really like that. Um, you can also see that in my Coleman Scanu. Um, but anyway, that's one thing I've done to it. So I'm about losing all these clips here in the grass. Um, but that's one addition I made which I really like. If you're young, like I was 20 years ago, you probably don't need to do that, but that really helps. Um, so let's go to the next thing I've done. All right, guys, we're back on the other side of canoe now, but this could be done on any side. Um, but the next thing I did is went, I fish a lot. So I'm thinking, how can I put rod holders on this thing? I tried some of those store-bought screw clamp mounts. Let me tell you something, just stay away from those. Those are cheap. The first thing I did is I got me some Roberts rod holders by Atwood. And all this is, and I did this on the Coleman's Canoe too, is a two by four. I shaved this side down. I mounted the Roberts mount on this. These are reusable zip ties. I'll post a link to this in the description. And I'll show you how this mounts. This works really well. You can put these on these wood um, pieces going across the canoe. And the, I'm telling you, these things are stable. These things, when zip tied down, these things do not move. So let me show you how I mount these. This goes like this. This goes like this. This goes like that. Zip tie it down. Right there. Right there. This thing. I'm telling you, it's stable. This thing is not going anywhere. But that's the first kind of mount I did on this boat. But then when I started getting to some kayaks, I thought, well, how can I utilize my kayak um, mounts onto my canoes? And I'll show you what I did right here. This is a Yak Attack kayak rod holder. I think that's a one and a half inch ball on it. It's got a T screw on the bottom. Um, so I'll show you what I did is you need to go to a hardware store and I think this is a two inch long quarter 20 stainless steel bolt. That's all you need. And what you do is you take that T-screw out, you drill a hole. I've got holes drilled. There's one right there. 
there's one right there there's one right there what you do what you do is you take this out you don't need that save it though put this up through there just got to hold it Screw that just like that. That's not going anywhere. I'll tell you, it's awesome. I just don't leave these on here because sliding off the rack and everything. But that's an awesome way to mount a rod holder on a canoe. All you got to do is just drill a quarter inch hole. It doesn't hurt anything. Down through this black plastic gunwale is is very easy to do. Um, so that's my improvements I've done on mountain rods on this boat. All right, guys, like I said in the intro, in the intro, um, this boat can be paddled solo. Let me show you, normally this two person canoe, this is the back seat. You're facing that way. That's the front seat. If you paddle this thing solo, sit in the back seat, but face this way. Just put a little more weight in the front. You can paddle it solo from the back and I do sit in the back solo when I'm running an electric motor, but I put the battery all the way up front for weight uh, and just run along a cord. Uh, but anyway, when you paddle things solo, sit right here in the front seat, but turn around and face the other way. The seat, you can't even tell the difference in the seat, these molded seats, they're fine, um, but I look that way. So that's how you paddle it, the best way to paddle it solo. Um, now as far as sitting on short trips, I don't need to use a seat back, but if I know I'm going to be catfishing half the night or whatever on a long trip, I use a bleacher back seat right there. And all it does is just is for bleachers. I put it on here and I strap it on here. So let's do that. There we go. And also you can adjust this. I'm gonna tell you, that's a lifesaver right here if you're sitting on a river all night catfishing with this bleacher back seat. That's all I've done for the seating. It works well. Like I said, I don't use it most of the time if I'm just on a, you know, three, four hour fishing trip. My back's not in bad shape, it's pretty good. But if I'm catfishing at night, this is definitely what I use or on an all day trip, this is what I use. Okay guys, one of the last things I'm gonna talk about is putting the motor on this. Um, when I'm solo with a motor, I do sit in the back because the back seat is closer to the back. When I'm paddling and I'm solo, I sit in the front, sit in the front seat, but face this way. Um, if you use the motor solo and you did it that way, facing the opposite way, it's, the seat's too far away to reach the control. So you have to sit in the back when you're solo using a motor. Um, but anyway, I've got this mount. I think it's an old town mount. Lots of people make them. I'm gonna show you how I do this. There's one modification. There is one modification you need to do with this because this thing will come off. All right, let's show you how to do this. Get these loose. The smaller end, this is angled, goes to the back. You just shove it just like that and tighten it up. You can put probably a couple horsepower gas motor on here. I've never done that. I just use an electric on here. Check state law because some states like North Carolina, you've got to have a license on the boat to do that. And that's how you do that. Well, let me tell you, this being said, let me tell you, this thing mounted, they don't give you any directions with it. Don't go out in the world like this. If you hit a stump or rock or whatever with that trolling motor, it can slam this thing loose and do like that or the other way. I don't care how tight you get it, it can do it. So let me tell you how I solve this problem. I drill quarter inch holes in the gunwheel just like I did for my, my 
um, like I did for my rod holders. I got these at the hardware store. Even though I used to manage hardware stores, I forget what they're called. I put these just like this through there. Take the other one. It's got a spring lock. It's probably called a spring lock pin. Then I tighten it. It can't move but so far then. I don't have it as tight as it should be. But that keeps that thing from moving forward. Because if you hit something, this thing can move all the way that way, which is bad news I found out. Um, but anyway, that's how I mount this. Anyway, that's how I mount a trolling motor on the boat. Um, you can make your own mount. There's, I'll post a link. There's one good article I found. I'll see if I can find a link to it, how you can make your own. Um, but this one's store-bought. It works well. But you do, you do need to use some kind of stops right in front of it. Um, and that's it on that. Hey, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that video. Hope this helps you. If you got an Old Town 158 or some similar canoe, uh, I think the 146 is real similar. It's just shorter. You know, the 158 means it's 15 foot 8 inch long. The 146 is 14 6 inches long. Same thing with the 119. It's 11.9. But anyway, hope this helps you on your 158 or similar canoe. Um, you know, the great thing about canoeing and kayaking is all these modifications. You can make your own. You can improve upon them however you want to. I hope this helps everybody. Let me know if you improved upon it because I may take your advice and do the same. Um, but stay safe on the water. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see everybody next time. Thanks for watching.